So let's go and create a new view. After our loan view, I'm going to command N. We need a Swift UI. Click next. And this is going to be called add loan view. Okay, close the left panel, make our preview smaller and click on resume so we can get our resume here. So let's see what we are going to build. Um, opening my uh, ready application, when I click, we have a model view here. We have top area, which are two buttons, cancel and done. You can uh, push down to dismiss but it's also required to have a button to cancel. So we can click on cancel it, it will go away. The thumb button is inactive. And here we have a small form um, that allows us to put our loan information, name, amount, start date, which is date picker. We just choose a date. We can scroll the years here and the due date. Again, another date picker. You can choose the date here, whatever you want. The keyboard, you can bring Command-K up for our amount. We are not going to allow anything else apart from numbers into input. And for the name, we can have a standard keyboard because we can put any name we want. But amount is important, so we don't allow user to put something else here. We don't want to deal with it. And you see, once I put a name and amount, my thumb button becomes active, so I can now save my loan because um, start date and date, the end date, we have default values of the current date. And uh, we need to just import two items in order to make our loan so the user is able to create a loan. Otherwise, the button is inactive. So let's create that view. And uh, we can look at it and visualize what we have. So everything together is in a vertical stack. And in our vertical stack on top, we have a horizontal stack with two patterns inside. And as you can see, there is a spacer to push everything apart in between them. And then we have a, a form with four items inside our form. So basically that's it. There's two, three parts in there if we are looking at it globally. Right, so uh, let's get rid of this text. Next code will start complaining. So let's quickly make a vstack. And in our vstack on top, as you remember, I said we will have a horizontal stack. And uh, let's put two patterns inside. In the first one, let's just put the text called this cancel. And quickly copy this, paste it here and call this done. Let's click on our preview to resume and let's see what we have. So we have cancel button and thumb button. They are stuck to each other. So remember what we said, if we put a spacer in between them, this will push on both sides so everything is spread out maximum to the end okay what we want to do is let's see because they are touching on the borders here let's put some padding on our age stack see where our curly brace of age stack finish you can mark around and it shows what is finishing so we put some padding here. So now it will push, once the preview loads, it will push our view a little bit inside so it doesn't really touch the walls here. Uh, this doesn't work, let's try again. Okay, you can see now it pushes everything inside. So now let's work on our cancel and done buttons because right now they don't really look like a button. So for our cancel, um, we want to add a font and this is going to be big uh, but not very big so let's call it title 3 and uh, you can see it marks the area where we can tap which, which is the size of our button if you want to make it a little bit bigger so it's easier for the finger to tap we can add a frame 
with uh, width and height and alignment or you can put a width or oh, I don't know 55 maybe and height of 30 points alignment we don't really need so you can just get rid of it uh, it's actually the width of 50 oh, let's say actually the width if we get rid of the width keep only the height is not really an option so let's put uh, I don't know 70 here how long is the cancel it's too little let's put 80 all right so you can see it's a nice and big area to click and the same thing we can do for our thumb pattern let's put a font of title 3 And this one I want to make actually bold. So we say font weight to be bold. Or actually it's too much. Let's put semi bold. Yeah. And uh, let's add a frame. Of uh, width. And let's put something like 60 here. Maybe even 70 points. Oops. yeah and the uh, height we can put 30 just the same we did with our cancel button All right so everything is set we can uh, command p to make sure we have no errors and uh, now this is where our h stack finishes if you want we can actually fold this into h stack so it uh, doesn't take too much space and we are going to work on our form so in order to create a form we just say form and just curly brace to set a form and you see our form takes all the screen now and pushes our h stack on top with uh, with its two buttons so in our form we need to have four things two text fields and two date pickers so let's create a text field and in order to create a text field, we are going to initialize it with a title which is basically placeholder if you are coming uh, from um, UI uh, Swift um, the, the previous one is storyboard so uh, the first one is going to be a name and the text uh, this is where it gets a bit interesting so it has a binding string uh, what we need here is some kind of variable that is going to hold the value of this text field so to do that we can say at state var name equals and we can initialize it with empty string and in order to pass it here binding we need to put a dollar sign and the name so whatever we type in this text field the value will be automatically assigned to this variable so that's why we put it here and this is state so the it keeps the state once our view here gets uh, destroyed and recreated our uh, struct we can uh, make sure that this variable is kept separately and won't be uh, destroyed every time and then we need another text field and this time we want to keep the amount and we don't want to assign it to a name we want to assign it to a different variable so let's create that and call this amount and you can initialize it with an empty string and make sure you change it here all right because uh, let's see what happens if we don't change um, I don't know if this will work now if we run it here let me just quickly check because right now we don't have uh, option to access our add loan view in order to run it on our simulator so if you click on the play button there you can see the background changes and yeah actually I can type here you see when I type something here it automatically copies the same thing to our second text field just because we are using the same variable here but if I change this to amount we need a dollar sign because it's binding 
and uh, this automatically recognizes it. And if I continue typing something there, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't affect one another. Let's stop our simulator there. All right, so the two text fields were created. Now we're going to create a date picker. So we say date picker and we're going to initialize one with a title and uh, also a selection and display component. So uh, let's see where it is. Title selection in range now. All right, this getting huge, and I don't really see. Ah, this is the, this is the one we need. So if you don't really see what uh, exact function you need there, you can just type out, and Xcode will sort it out uh, everything. So the first date picker is going to be called uh, start date, and this is the label on the left side. Then selection, it's binding, and this time a date. So we need a variable to hold this and let's call this um, start date and it's gonna be a date object uh, we can initialize uh, with the current date and I'm going to quickly copy and paste this and call this due date and again we initialize it with a uh, current date so uh, we're going to bind this to our start date and displaying uh, components. When we have a picker, we can display day, time, or only time. But uh, since we don't really care what time we repaid some part of our, actually what time our loan was taken, this is the loan. We can use just dot, and you can see all the options here. You have hour and minute or a date. We want to have the date here only. And uh, just copy this paste it again this one we call due date and very important make sure you change this binding to due date as well otherwise uh, we're going to have an issues later on and uh, that's it uh, this is how our view looks like right now we don't have any function calls yet we're going to put this in nice MVVM uh, model a little bit later but you can see how our uh, UI looks you can run this in order to be able to use also our pickers